So, I am here picking up my new trailer today. And we're just going to take the truck in now to get the hitch put on and hook it up to the trailer. And then we'll do the walk around. So, I'll need my keys to take that lock off and then we'll put the pin in and now when you drop your tailgate be very weary that will smash yeah. your tailgate if you let it go yeah um, so what we're we six down from the top so one two three four five six yeah now this side because we are probably sitting slightly crooked uh -huh. may give us a little bit of resistance but that's okay we'll just oh, no resistance there lock pin in and that's it done and I mean, you're not taking these brackets off every time. You're just no. taking the bars out and this guy out. Yeah. And then you just, now, we'll lower the weight down. Now, to take them off is the same way. But you want to make sure you can kick them like that before you take them off. That way, there will be no load of pressure under there. So right. Spring back on you. And again, I always recommend you take that big block, of whatever you can put under there. Yep. You see how the, the weight's getting loaded onto them now. That's probably full weight. Now, you probably... Let's look at the way your vehicle is heading. That's full weight. Yeah. You may even want to go up another notch. See how this goes? You may want to go to the seventh link and put those bars even more to work. Okay. But, uh, as far as your truck sitting? It's sitting pretty good right yeah. now. It's always going to come down about an inch or so. Well, yeah. That's inevitable, but I mean, mm -hmm. you don't want these flexing too hard either. They'll, they'll no. get a permanent bend in them too. So, <laughs> um, right. Takes so much pressure off your suspension. It'll load the load, the tongue weight onto your frame equally as well. And I just like to, again, if you take the 6x6 block, you won't be doing this so much. Um, but I like, yeah. to, I like to get the jack above the, the, the bars. Bar, or the, sorry, this torsion bars. Because um, <clears throat> if you do that, if you hit anything, it'll just work like a, yeah. like a skid plate. No, they're not the same as sway bars, or are they kind of the same as sway they're, bars? They're not the same. A no. sway bar would be attached on a ball and then mounted to the side here and it's okay. friction controlled. Yeah. They're kinda, I honestly don't even recommend them. Yeah. Um, just because they're a pain, you gotta take them off every time. Yeah. They can bend easy. Yeah. Um, it's sort of more of an older system yeah, type of thing. Yeah, they're just not, uh, they're not cool. I'm gonna put this chunk of wood in this just in case you guys got no trouble on the highway or something. Don't already. Close them up. Once you get this one on, yeah, you're so perfectly you're safe. Ready to do everything else. Now, then what I want you to do is I want you to jack the, lift the truck and the trailer at the same time. Okay. And see, a lot of people will put these bars in, they'll have their chains, and they'll be, you'll see them just... Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Might. We don't have to do that. Yeah, we let use, this do the work. We do, yeah, we do it the smart way. We're going to do it with the jack. When you go, it's bringing like a little six by six chunk of wood. Yes. That way, your stroke of your jack will... Will be a lot less. You'll be yeah, doing yeah. a lot less. Bring it down here. Now, by law, now they want your brake pull away okay. attached separately to your hitch. Okay. So just don't bind it over rubber. Yeah. But if it does, if your chains, trailer, ever comes away and everything fails, it'll pull this little guy out. Yeah. And it'll lock up your trailer brakes. Oh, okay. As long as you have a battery attached, which you will, anyways. But um, chains, uh, cross them. Left yep. goes to the right, and vice versa. That way it will catch your hitch. Yeah. Or it's more likely to catch the hitch of the ball. Um, then we go take your bars. Now see see how these have a notch on them? Right. So the way I like to put them in, put them in the hole. Okay. Rip up on like, like yeah. a baseball bat. Yeah. Slam them in. Slam them up. Okay. You can give that one a shot on your other side. Your bars right there. I find if you grip down here, it puts it up at the okay. wrong angle and it won't go in. Perfect. You get them up there and bring both your hands right to the front. Bring, yeah, bring both your hands like, yep, yeah, grip. Now do it. See how easy that was? I'm yeah. To take them out. You can simply walk them forward with that notch. Okay, and then. And then shake them. Uh, okay. 
or you can pull this pin right here. You okay. On the camera. Yep. Okay. And then once we want to, we want to put them back in. We just line her up. Done. Okay. And then uh, pretty simple. You see here. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. I've already pre-measured it and gotten these tightened on. Yeah. So you pull your little locker pin. We'll do the yes. same on the other side. But with this setup, I'm gonna go probably right to this chain link. Okay. So let's go one, two, three, three four, four, five, six. Six down. Okay. Yeah. Make sure when you hook this up. Yeah. This is you don't want this. Right. Because that binds on that, uh -huh. and it just it's not. You want that yeah. bar straight on that guy. So yeah. um, you bring it down. Hook her on there, and you can see I can literally do that right by hand. That's There's so no... much simpler than uh, straining your. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I see why you say. Yeah, and it's not dangerous. It's not going to no. fall back and break your knee. No. If you have it under all that load. Okay. It's on the. It's on this tank now. Yeah. And you can... Oh yeah, because that's the arrow. You just point at whichever tank you want. Right. You okay. can use them both at once, though. Um, and then uh, just close them off. That one's already closed. Yep. I don't think we're running anything off propane, so we can go ahead and close yep. it. Mm -hmm. Make sure that's tight, pretty tight. Yeah. So those are both full for you. So six. Oh yes, I've seen the. I'm sorry, the the color change when you. Uh, yeah. Close it from red to. Uh, yeah, if we ran it for a bit, it would just go right to red. Red, yeah. Okay. It's empty. Um, come on. I don't recommend tighten these too much because they're nah. a pain when they're too tight. Yeah, just um, some tight. That's yeah. really all you need there. You uh, your new Interstate Deep Cycle batteries on there. It's one of the clear cell ones. Mm -hmm. So you can see where the water's at, like the, the fluid's at in them. Mm -hmm. uh, now, you definitely want to take those in for winter. Um, oh, yes. Yeah, take yep. them in. Don't put them on cement. Nope. Um, safety chain. Safety chains. Um, Some way plug for your power and lights yep. and brakes. Yep. And then there's a brake pull away. And we'll, we'll go over that in a minute when yep. we'll hook them up. Yep. yep. Um, all right, stabilize the jack crank. You know how those work. Yeah. Yep. Um, we'll use this for your hitch in a minute there. So we just kept that cardboard box in there so we don't gouge up the floor with your sure. weight kit. Weight yep. kit instructions are right there, guys. Yep. And this is just a simple door pin back. Yeah. Mm hmm. That um, door handle, you have steps that hold up in three. Hot water heater. I've got that turned off already. Yeah. Um, but it's pretty simple in here. Um, there's your electric switch right here. Okay. So it's always good to spray them switches down with some penetrating fluid yes. or some fluid film because they do seize up sometimes. Um, and then the only other thing really is significant to note is the magnesium anode rod in there. You guys are probably familiar with those. Not only is it the plug for the hot water drain, it's also a rod, a sacrificial rod that um, it was made of magnesium that the minerals in the water will eat away rather than eating, eating away at your steel tank. So right. about every three years or so, you gotta replace one of those, but you're taking it in and out every six months too yeah. when you're uh, winterizing and dewinterizing. So you'll get okay. a good feel for it. When it's down to a rod about this size, mm -hmm. you'll know it's time to replace it. But when you bring it out and it looks disgusting and, and all eaten away, that's it's doing its job. So that's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's always on electricity. Uh, if you have that switch on. Okay. Yeah. You can run them both at the same time, uh, electricity and the propane, but the propane's controlled from the inside. Yeah. Outdoor plugs, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Furnace exhaust, so that will be mm -hmm. high. So oh, yeah. Deck yes. Or this careful yeah. with kids, or, um, um, you know, leaning anything like yeah. a lawn chair up against it. Yeah. You got the nice rooms on this one, mm -hmm. SBX model. Uh, these centers will pop off, then there'll be a rubber grommet that pops out, and then they're grease nipples, so you can direct oh, grease right okay. to your bearings. Definitely do that. You guys yes. sound like you're going to be doing a lot of traveling. Yeah. You definitely want to be getting some grease for those. Yep. Uh, the vent, that's just for your stove top, and yep. when you're done with the unit, for like when you're storing it, you can close those up, they click in. Um, they will get easier over time. Right now, yeah. they're pretty hard to click in and out, but they will, just like the door latches, they'll yep. work their way over time. That's your unique black key on your key set for just that slam latch lock. Well, this will act like a little awning too. I mean, you can have your awning out right. under it when you're using this, but uh, you just got a simple little outdoor kitchen. Uh, your fridge, I've left that off. 
just for the sake of uh, the demo, I didn't want to yeah. pop any breakers, but we can see when I hear it. Feel it still has a little. Is that an electric? Or it's or electric only. Okay, so it's not gas. No, just electric. It's electric only. Yeah. Okay. So when you want to use it, you just turn her off. Turn her off. And I like to turn it off just yep. so it doesn't consume electricity yes. when yeah. you're not using it. Okay, that's good. And uh, your your door will keep it like from <laughs> from the, the door flying open, but you screw physically screw it down so you don't need any straps with this one. And then you have your extra countertop. Prep it, work. Is there a gas fitting somewhere around there for a little barbecue type of thing? Or? Uh, look, I don't think there is. Okay. This one has one. Not that I can see. Some of them do, but I'm not seeing it on this one. I'll have a look as we okay. go around the trail. Yeah. But this is pretty significant. See those little holes? Yeah. With Catalina models, they've put a slide override, so there's a big threaded rod here. Right? Okay. Now your stable, you know the one that runs your stabilizer uh -huh. jacks down. You can slip it through here onto this. Yeah. And you can manually take in the slide if you ever ran out of that, power or that's, something. I was going to ask you. So okay. it'll just be yeah. slow. Um, yeah. If you have like an impact gun, it'll make it way better. Yeah. Um, but you can always take that in. Yeah. Okay. So at least at least you're not stuck. You're not yeah. Sure. You don't, Great. You guys, you guys are going down to the states or something. You can see a little plug. This I ripped out of one of the. The units earlier yeah. um, uh, on Friday when I was doing a demo, I used one, and that's one of those quick connect outs or profane fittings that you want. Right. With this guy, um, I just want to, it's a slam latch, so. And then just uh, push these in as you're doing them so it doesn't catch anything, you know. Um, little pin back, these aren't, I'll tell you right now, these aren't the best pin backs. No. These, these 90s because you can easily you know, yeah you can see uh, it kind of so I don't really recommend using it to be honest, no. honest with you just keep it up yeah close like that yeah yeah <laughs> um, okay so this when you travel I do recommend going on this mm -hmm. it would prevent yes. a door from yeah. popping going down the road um, so, let's just so it is not under, or closed underbelly in this one. Mm -hmm. I call it shield protection to sound fancy. Uh, spare tire, cover. Um, that's just all that is, is showing you where a backup camera by Furion, the company, can be mounted. Mm -hmm. uh, it is pre wired, so it's just plug and play if you ever got one. Um, they're about 700 bucks in a parts store because they have, have to have their own screen with yep. them. Yep. Um, but that's all that is. It has its own gasket there, so you don't have to worry about it leaking or anything. This is just our AC condensation coming off because we're really cranking that today. Oh, yes, um, yeah. Fresh water connection. So this is our storage tank water. So this is the water we've been using today. So you just simply take your garden hose, put it in there. Fill it up. Let it fill up. It'll spit back out the air intake when it's full. That's about 40 gallons. You go and use your water pump on that. Yep. Um, just a nice, nice plate. Um, you got about a 15 or 20 foot cord here. Um, those are simple. You just uh, them. We give you the little adapter there, uh, so that's in your your uh, silverware tray. Yep. Yeah. Um, another stabilizer jack crank. Um, your sewer hose can be stored in here. Yep. yep. So fridge venting again that with that new automatic Norcal fridge. If you <laughs> want to take the power away from it, you just simply take it like a nickel or a key and open right. that up and unplug it physically. That's all you have to do with that. So it's okay. fresh bending because it is propane. It needs uh, intake and everything. Yeah. Okay. Um, you guys are probably familiar with bumping. Oh, yes. Um, so again, black tank, clearly labeled. It's obviously the bigger pipe too. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then your black gray water, yep. clearly labeled. It's the smaller one. So always lube those sliders up too because yep. you can get in trouble if you don't use those for a long time. They can kind of seize. Yep. Um, but uh, then your sewer cap. Always make sure you close them before you use, mm -hmm. re start using it again. Because right. you'll get a shitty situation between here and here. When you <laughs> no pun open. intended. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we um, know. We, we saw we've, it. we've seen it going down the road. Oh, yeah. Do you mm -hmm. want your, uh, that's your low point drain right here. Right? Okay. For your hot and cold. Okay. There and there. Okay. Now our uh, so what would you use that for now? Just to drain out the lines. Okay. You winterize it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now your low point drain for your freshwater tank. Now remember, I have that about three quarters full. Do you want that drain, or you want to keep that water in there? Do you remember your freshwater holding tank. Mm -hmm. 
and you can see a low point drain for that. That when you want to empty that one, you just have that line. Oh yeah, it's right there. Yeah. Get rid of it. Connection guys, right here. Um, make sure the person that winterizes this unit takes this little guy out. Okay. Yeah, the yeah. Filter takes yeah. this little filter out and then presses in. I'm not gonna do it now because we're under full load of uh, yeah, okay. pressure. And then it gives that little shot so the paint comes out through there. That's very important. Or like in a couple years time, you'll be replacing that whole unit because it'll it'll crack when it's not winterized properly. This one's a different story. This is your black tank flush. Yeah. There's no check valve in there. Um, so that simply, just you put a garden hose to it, you pump water down, there's a spray nozzle on top of your black tank. It'll spray and get rid of all that uh, crap. Crap. Yeah. If you have any buildup or anything. A lot, they're really useful for people that don't know how to use chemical and they forget to use yeah. chemical. Um, it'll clean some of that out of there. Um, cable satellite connection to that. That'll, this is the intake. So whatever you hook up here, cable or satellite, will route to the TV connections and be available for, for use there. Um, just a simple side storage mm -hmm. pass through. I always recommend to lock, like when you're storing it, lock everything because yes. not only is it more secure, but see how the seams yep. are tighter too. So it'll keep that that much more water out. Um, okay, that's pretty space I'm going to go grab the head and then we'll show you the hookup. We'll get a Let's start inside. I got the AC on for us, so pretty simple up here. Uh, obviously, you got the door, um, deadbolt. Yeah. And uh, steps. Yeah. That's not how those work. Or screen door on both. Yeah. So. Door. Yeah. And then these ones, though, they are. Just, uh, actually, those might be on the light switch too. They are. Yeah. Which is good. Yeah. That way. Oh yeah. Yeah. Nice all LED lights in this one, guys. Mm -hmm. They're slim fit, and they're, they'll last a lot, lot longer and uh, a lot more cooler. Efficient. And yeah, and especially if you uh, pay for power and stuff like that, they're going to be a lot more. Better. And there's your television hooked yeah. up there. If you put a TV on there, there should be like a little part of the wall that's reinforced for that. And you can put a little bracket on there and stuff like that. So just storage up here, guys. Yep. Yeah. Um, you got uh, under the bed storage there. Yeah. That's your stabilizer jack crank. Okay. So that goes on the four uh, four jacks outside, yeah. mm -hmm. and then you just okay. bring it down yeah. to stabilize them. You don't want to lift the unit, but you just want to bring them to the yeah. ground and then mm -hmm. give them about a half or a full turn, yeah. and they'll keep the trailer from rocking. But as you see, this one's pretty pretty stable. It's stable, pretty right? stable, yeah. Yeah, and it's always good to see, like, real plywood used, yep. rather than press board. Your floor is done with plywood as well. Yes, um, So Read this that. is, like, in all honesty, guys, like, if I bought a trailer, I would not buy a fiberglass side of the trailer. Like, this is the way to go. Uh, the aluminum side, there's a reason they still build them, and there's, there's a reason that because they're still the number one selling type of trailers out there it's just because of the ease of repairing and stuff yeah. like that um it's just you know it's built like a house like a, yeah you know like it's it's uh aluminum siding you pop that off there's wood for studs and then there's uh like batten insulation so it's very easy to repair and replace it um pocket door here yeah just a little stuff from no no dirt little slider so, uh, when you do travel with it though, guys, you just gotta make remember. Sure. Yep, make yeah, sure she snaps. Will, uh, yep. will kind of shake off the tracks. No big deal, but. It, uh, no, it's still important. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, that runs all three. That must be a new feature that they were putting on. Yes. Which is nice. Um, I do believe I have your water pump on. So, uh, we like to go over everything test all your appliances, like plumbing and all that kind of stuff. You can see there's still some a little bit of yeah. residual antifreeze in there. Mm -hmm. But that's the poisonous kind. That's the kind you want to use. So it's like a pink glycol base. Mm -hmm. um, so let's see here. Mm -hmm. Plumbing lines and whatnot. So we here um, a new process we started. We wanted we want to do um, we want to fill up like all your holding tanks, which we do, and then dump them. We test all the plumbing. Uh, a lot of camp like you'll go pick up a camper from another dealership, and they'll actually be all dry, so they won't even show you anything running or anything like that. But we're going to show you everything today. We have the fridge on for a while. I'm going to turn mm -hmm. your hot water heater on as well. When you get to this panel, this is your main control panel, guys. Right. Um, so your DSI is just propane heat. So. 
Um, I already have your propane on, so I turned your tank on earlier. Um, so all you have to do is look that, make sure there's a water source to it. So make yeah. sure like, right now I know we have two thirds of fresh water, like holding tank uh, filled up. So I know I have your water pump on too, because obviously we have water. Um, so I know it's safe to go ahead and turn that hot water heater on. Now to turn, if this one does have the electric option yeah. for hot water heat, there'll be a little black switch outside on the hot water heater okay. panel. We'll, we'll check that out when we go there. But um, so right here, you can test your battery power. Yeah. So that's not going to read true unless until you unplug physically unplug yeah. the, the camper from its cords from, from its 30 amp power source. Fresh water, our holding tank, our 40 gallon holding tank is holding two thirds of the fresh water tank. And we can empty that. We can let that drain out before you take off too, if you don't want to end up carrying that water. Are you guys going to campgrounds? Or are you kind of doing a little of everything? Uh, I guess a little everything. Yeah, a little everything. Okay, so it wouldn't probably hurt to keep some water in there. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah well that's okay, because I because can get yeah. the driveway. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, perfect. There's no problem there. Uh, black water, which is your sewage tank, yeah. that's mm -hmm. empty. Um, when you set up your black tank, you always want to treat it with some chemical. Uh, yep. Always, always treat it with hmm. chemicals. So drop one of those pre-measured pouches down there, yep. and then add about uh, four liters of water yep. or so, and that'll create a base slurry for your septic system. So yep. you're basically every time, even if people, you know, when people park seasonal yep. and just leave them there in the campgrounds, you still want to do that too because over time it will build up a yep. little mountain of debris, and solid yep. debris, and you can't. It's almost impossible yep. to get that out of there. Yep. Um, so yeah, chemically treat every time, keep your valves closed, then when you go to dump, we'll show you this outside, but you guys probably already know, you dump your black first, mm -hmm. then your gray, and the gray will wash out that sewer hose for you. Gray one, um, this may only have one gray tank to it, it may have two, we'll tell when we get outside, yeah. but that would be just like for a generic panel for like a little bit bigger trailer, and there is a gray too. Yeah. Now if it only has one, obviously gray one will be the default one, yeah. but if it has two, um, it usually goes gray one will be the first gray tank from the front yeah. and then gray two will be black But we'll clear that up when we go aside um, Interior lights you can see they all go off and on now with this one you can customize and you can just turn them off individually If you don't want that much light yeah. uh, Exterior light uh, That's up, sorry. Yep. Yeah. So that's actually the blue big blue LED underneath here Okay, so that'll actually good. light up the camper and I'll get you to do the honors and just extend your awning, just push and hold. And there's nothing particular that you have to do, it's just all automatic. And when you see a flap the boat, um, you'll know it's a boat right. <laughs> so you know that little telltale, there you go, so right around there, that's perfect. That's right around where you want it. Yeah. And this awning's all automatic, so if it does fill up with water, it will auto dump. Okay. itself so it won't damage itself but say if we had a rainstorm like yesterday you definitely want to bring that awning in it's too much oh, yeah. same with the wind you, do, you definitely want to protect your investment this is a really large awning as well as you can yeah. see so you don't want a lot of wind on this one either but typically you would do this if it was raining you would uh, dip your awning a bit and then yeah. uh, just tighten that up and you can see all the water would run off this side and if it got too bad like a storm it would still dip as yeah. well um, but before you take it back in, you just want these somewhat loose, so these are free flowing. So it'll just make it easier for you to roll that back up. <laughs> and you actually also have lights. You want those loose? You have lights in the speakers too. Yeah. So the marine speakers. Oh <laughs> yes. So yeah, you can go ahead and pretty slick. Take her back in if you Put want. Put her off so over. So then, so cute. And there's no way to over tighten this, so. As you uh -huh. uh, bring it back in, it will just stop automatically. And there's no straps, no metal, <coughs> it's all automatic now. So it's much like, better than doing it by hand. Oh, yes. oh my god. So much I like better these than steps that. too, these new steps. Yeah, I like them. They're so, so solid. Like, no, you that, 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 so I'm just going to close the door because we do yeah. have AC going. And this countertop, they use it everywhere. It's a composite one piece. Yeah. This will never come out. Like the t There's no T-molding or anything. It's very scratch resilient and waterproof as well. So it's not going to like bow mm -hmm. or yeah. anything like that with the typical countertops you see in RVs. So mm -hmm. Carmen does a great job. Uh, same as their plywood floors. I mean, yeah. if you put press board in floors, you're asking for nothing but trouble. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. These are real plywood in the floors. And you yeah. got you actually have a built 
enclosed underbelly too. So the heat, the heater, you can see it's ducted. Yeah. Same mm -hmm. as the AC. But the cool thing about the heater is you have that big ductwork that runs through there. So when you have heat on in the fall or whatnot, yeah. um, it's going to feel like a heated floor because mm. the, heat, the yeah. radiant heat's going to come around. Uh, toilet, it's pretty self-explanatory. It does have the instructions right on back. Yeah. But uh, halfway is what you run your water with and the bowl will dump and flush at the same time. Yeah. And our showers right here. Yeah. Just always like to test these. Sometimes they leak at these little yeah. junctions. <laughs> Oh yeah. So we know. Yeah, yeah you've seen that before. Good. And sometimes they like there as well, so I like to. The technician does test them, but I like to test them in front of everybody. We got company. That was fast. I don't waste time. Oh, oh wow. Thank you so much. And then these these are new. Uh, they're very lightweight, very slick little shower curtains. Yeah. yeah, they looked, uh, I was going to say they're, they're more like a fabric. Yeah. A waterproof fabric. Yeah. The other ones over time will like break down yeah. because they're like more plastic mm. based. But these are a lot cleaner yeah, looking. So. Yeah. A lot nice, nice and light too. And there's mom over there with her frosty ice cap. <laughs> Queen bee. Number two. Queen bee number two. Queen bee number one's home in her pen. We're gonna bend to your guys, so just, you just pull. Let them do it. Yeah. Okay, they don't have covers. They don't. Those are those are aftermarket covers, yep. so they do cost you. But they're they run around forty bucks hmm. a cover, and you can just install them themselves. So they just screw into the little metal yep. sides there, and okay. you can keep those open all year. I, they are a nice feature to have. Yeah, so it, you could grab some today if you want. Yeah, it might uh, be a good idea. Color. Um, you want, but uh, it's easy to install. You got to get up on the roof too, yeah. like uh, every now and then, every six months to check Good the to check it up. or the die core up there. Yeah. So if you see any splitting or anything like that, just buy a tube of die core from us and just run it down there. Um, same with your sides and stuff like that. You know, check the silicone. But with these guys, they're pretty, uh, yeah. pretty good. Uh, you pretty know, solid. Yeah. That have cooling mass, you know, that's working. Um, yeah. The cool thing about both the heat and the AC, it's all ducted, so. You're gonna have even like you even have AC in the bathroom. You got heat in the bathroom as well, and same as the bedroom. But you can uh, you can move these little vents around. So say if you're sitting there, you can probably feel the AC a little better if I move it, twist it towards you. But uh, you also have lights too, like all the lights here. Yeah. Um, sure all that work. Blinds are really easy to operate. They just push pull. Oh yeah. So they're like the premium blind. Yeah. Now, if those ever sag on you over the years, if they get like, if you're traveling and you're like, oh, how come that blind keeps closing? It's just there's little strings here. Yeah. And yeah. The, the tension will decrease on them as they get stretched out. And all you have to do is just uh, take back a little bit of the screw out and uh, pull down a little bit and screw it back in and it'll tighten right that string right Oh, we restrung them before. Yeah, did you? Yeah. <laughs> they're not fun. No, yeah, these ones are no pretty, they're really not fun to, oh, to oh, restring. The whole, the whole yeah, string, because the string, the string broke up no. at the top, it, like, it like inside a, we had a... Night screen yeah. and a day screen. Oh, those are even worse. Yeah. yeah. It's a big, yeah, yeah. big yeah. long one too. <laughs> Took up the dining room <laughs> table plus and... That's why it broke, because it's so mild, heavy yeah. blonde mile of string and of course we watched the YouTube video on how to do it it worked but to get that tension right was near impossible yeah, with that heavy of a it was yeah, wicked it was and they were about the size of the back window wow. so they were that wouldn't be fun no no never again I said I'll throw it out and buy a, a new one yeah <laughs> yeah let's put it so I like to keep the fan on auto yeah I usually keep it on auto high yeah um, or auto low and then yeah. ramp up and ramp down and yeah. shut itself off come back on like a heat pump or forced yeah. air furnace now if you kept it on fan on high or low it'll continuously blow even though the cooling mechanism cuts out um, it'll, it'll still blow in the fan so we get a lot of calls before when they didn't teach them properly because they're like Oh, my AC won't turn off, but it's reached its temperature. Like it's it's cold mm. enough in here, it won't turn off. It's just the blower continues to come. So I always recommend like the auto mode. It just it just works yeah. um, better uh, for the heat. And you see, you got cool. You just have simple fan, so that will just exchange air yeah. um, when you're on fan mode. And then you go off, and then you have heat mode. 
and he would turn the thermostat off for your heat. Okay, so so the uh, furnace comes on. There's a the furnace there. It's all automatic. Yeah, your intake's right here. Yeah. So okay. the furnace cassette's actually sitting underneath it as well. Yep. Uh, so that's where you would pull it out from the surge. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so you can hear lighting there. Yeah, uh, in the motorhome we had, um, it was, I guess, it, well it works like a heat pump. Yeah, <laughs> so, that's all you have to do. You will smell, because it is brand new, brand you will smell yeah. a little residual yeah. oil yeah. burning off. Same with the oven, mm -hmm. um, you can kind of smell it now, so that's what it's And smell. what's the black block down there? So I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to switch back to cooling, yeah. so we don't die in here. Put it back, uh, yeah. turn it the thermostat. Now that guy is a live propane detector and also a carbon monoxide detector. Okay. Yeah. So that runs off the new deep cycle interstate battery installed up front. So we got your brand new battery up front as well as your double 30 propane both filled. Um, so that production from propane and carbon monoxide propane is heavier than oxygen so it lays lower if it leaks. So that's why that's located down there yeah. and you would have a smoke detector right here that's a little nine volt battery there yeah and then you have your fire extinguisher located right here for oh know, yes right there is you can oh yes right there. and so that's kind of like your safety mechanism mm -hmm. um, absolutely so that just like at home like at the forced air furnace or whatnot that will continue to blow until it gets all the heat out of it uh, to make it more efficient, and then it'll shut off. But our AC should kick in any minute. Back. We got our we got our vent closed. Pin back, pin back. We know we can kind of close this area. Yeah. Camper up. We're all done in here. Actually, there's only one vent to the roof. And that's this one in here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there isn't one in the back yeah. here. Well, that's okay. Yeah, that's cool. Did yeah. I actually recommend keeping them open a little bit in the winter time for air. The more airflow you can get in here, the better. People that tarp them down and stuff like that, I don't recommend that. That they sweat and they can get moldy and mildew up there. Yeah. The fridge is super simple, guys. Just normal. Okay. Yeah, a little LED light in there. I've had it going uh, for a while now, so if you reach in there, it should be nice and cold. Already, yeah, yeah that's cool effect there. Yep. Yeah. Uh, oh so yeah. It's yeah. a super simple fridge. Um, all you have to do is uh, press that and hold it to turn it off. Press this and hold it to turn it on. Now it's automatically power. So if you're plugged into power, yeah. it's going to use that as like a master uh, form. Um, now if say we're at the campground and your power gets disconnected, it's going to automatically switch to propane. So the, the, do it automatically, you don't have to do it. Nothing at all, yeah. So it'll save your food in that kind of perspective. So as long as your propane is open and flowing and stuff, we know it is because mm -hmm. we have hot water heater on. We did, we did the furnace and all that stuff. Now, if you don't want it to do that, uh, just open up the fridge access panel in the back and just un simply unplug the unit. Say if you, for some reason, wanted to just run it off propane all the time, but you want it to stay plugged in, just unplug it from the fridge panel. In fact, I'll show you where that is too. Let's get it. Trim that baby off. Uh, now, uh, we should be getting some hot water by now. These are nice too, because they're like, you don't have, if you drop them on the floor, they're not going to shatter because they're air plastic. They're like a plastic. So, uh, again, you're not going to get water sitting on here. It's not going to hurt anything. It's not going to mold or bend or anything like that. You will like, and when you're on a campground, you'll have better pressure because you know don't have to work up top. Like, you see, I can't even keep my hand under there, so we already have probably a full tank of uh, six gallons of hot water. Oh, lights, lights. Guys, that's your hot water heater tank right under there. Well, okay. So you do have to get these de winterized and winterized. Oh, that's so, for the, okay. The tank. Um, it's super easy. You can just reach in and bypass that when it comes time. Mm -hmm. um, I could explain to you in theory how to do it, but it would probably be better just to YouTube it at the moment or have something. It's not that big of a process, but the hardest thing is just to bypass the aperture. You, know, you can literally reach in and, and uh, turn the valves there. Mm -hmm. um, but that's your hot water heater right under there. Okay. 
I give you the first chemical treatment, so that'll be enough for one black tank. And then it kind of, I like the company of toilet because they give you that stuff and they give you some information on the toilets. Because a lot of RV dealers don't explain to you about that chemical treating your tank and all that stuff, and it just runs them into trouble uh, when they don't do that. But, and looks like some info on your uh, awning and uh, AC as well. You have the built in plywood drawers. Uh, flow to the individual vents. Oh, okay. So if you're sleeping at night in the bedroom, off. you can have a lot more flow. Okay. If you're entertaining out here, yeah. you can see you get a lot more flow. Yeah. Just a little directional. Uh, right here is your power inverter. So, uh, yep. Oh, underneath. Well, yeah, no okay. That's so that's uh, you can see it's all labeled. So yeah. when we're on power, when we're plugged in like we are now, yeah. Uh, all these uh, breakers work by your house. Yep. Uh, and then when you say we cut power, like so, now our DC, our battery power is taken over. Okay. And it runs on all 15 amp fuses. There is two 40s there too. Yep. And they're all labeled as well. Okay. Now, with off battery power, you won't be able to run the AC, you won't be able to run the plugs, and you won't be able to run the microwave. Yep. Everything else you can use off propane mm -hmm. and battery power. So the only, again, the only th three things is AC, plugs, and microwave. Put that back on. You can see your GFI is all protected in here as well. Yeah. So every plug in this camper, including outside, are GFI protected. So grab a full So this is simple. You just have uh, Velcro. And then you just pick up here. Pull that out. Oh, and, then, and these two little legs come down. They are adjustable. To adjust them, you just take the okay. bolts out. Right yep. So, let's go right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And then you can just put those cushions up top if you want to fill that gap. And then put it away. Uh, just kind of like so. And lock it in. Put your legs in. Quick, eh? Yep. <laughs> and this is your last point of uh, propane connection too. So if you want to bleed your system, you would come in here. Yeah. So that will get evacuate all the air out of your lines. Yeah. If you have all three of those burning. That will bring all the air out of your propane system. That way you know it's safe to start lighting your hot water heater, all that kind of stuff. So if you get new tanks or switch them, um, that's where you would leave the air out of the propane system from that cooktop. Get a little light here as well, LED light. Turn those guys off. Light the fan. Um, have you ever lit one of these ovens before? Yeah. And uh, here's on the old, old, old one, so it's probably pretty, totally different. Oh, yeah, it's pretty still about the same. You just go to pilot on here, yeah. line it up and see how that pushes in. Yeah. When you push and hold, that'll release a little bit of propane right to this line here. So I don't know if you can see that with your camera. Uh, oh, yeah. A little yeah. tiny line there. Yeah. Um, you just hold a barbecue lighter in there. Yeah. Okay. It'll take a few, like 30 seconds yeah. to get lit, but you'll see a little blue flame. Yeah. I'm um, continuing to hold the release of annual amount of propane. When that flame's been going for about 30 seconds, it'll, there's a little pin above it, and when that pin gets hot enough, it will release, and it'll allow our free flow of propane. That way we can take our hand off it, it'll still be going, and we light the rail. Now, if I light it, I see the blue flame, and I let go and it goes out, it just didn't get hot enough, so yeah. it just gets a little right. hotter. And then when you let go and it's still going, the blue flame's on, the pilot light's on, you can let, go ahead and light your rail, and it'll go light around. It's just a protection. Yeah. So they do give you that cord. It's just a simple like uh, yeah. red, yellow, and white cord. Yeah. That'll go right in the back of your TV. That'll that will actually feed um, video and audio from the DVD player built into this unit. Oh, so right that's, that is a DVD player. Yeah, it's a DVD oh, okay. player. It's a CD. It's yeah, one of the best stairs they got out there. But Furion, um, it's all Bluetooth, all that kind of stuff as well. Um, you can see you can sync it up with Bluetooth just by hitting the Bluetooth button or you can cycle through source. 
Okay. And you can see A, B, N, that's got to get, if you go to A, B, N, yeah. and you're watching a movie, you, your speaker wouldn't come through the TV, it'll come through these as well. Well, they come through the TV, you just have to turn the TV down, and they come through these rather. Um, and then you have auxiliary, so you can plug your phone into the auxiliary jack here. Um, that will, you can play right from there. Have back to the radio. There is USB, so you can load movies or music files on a USB, stick it in there, run it right from there okay. as well. Um, so we got radio. Um, there's two zones. So zone one is outside, yeah. zone two is inside. So if we just have zone one on, we get the speakers on us. So. So if someone was sleeping inside, so people were still uh, at the campfire, you can just keep one on, one off. Um, so we'll turn back to two, sorry. But that's both, we'll leave both of them on there for you. Um, and then you can program different channels and the clock and all that stuff. But, uh, and then when you want it off, you just hit that and it'll go on the low power. You would just hook it up to one of these, I forget which one it is, I see auxiliary in it's out. So this one here, auxiliary, yeah. and then you would just turn it on physically by that button, that will send power to that. And you, right now you could pick up three perfectly clear channels from the airwaves, so you get like CTV, like the old channels, yeah. but uh, they look really nice, just right from that antenna. But you have to keep that button on. Yeah, right. But that button, we want to turn that off because that will draw power from the battery when we're not plugged in. We hit that.